uh, how to reconcile it. That's where that's where we need a, 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 a practical uh, uh, platform for its implementation. Yeah? For as long as we don't have that, then there is going to be a lot of theories and uh, everyone is going to comment and everyone is going to criticize and the people who are the proponents are going to say uh, no and uh, those who are opponents will say yes and, and it will carry on. Yeah? So for as long as it's not, uh, you don't have a place where you can implement it, then you can't see uh, the, the effectiveness of, uh, of the law. Um, when we say about justice for all, uh, okay, uh, from the Islamic point of view, uh, we talk about justice in terms of uh, the human rights, right? So as far as human rights are concerned, it, as uh, freedom of uh, association, freedom of uh, religion, freedom of uh, uh, speech and all that is going to be given to, to everybody, right? So as far as uh, Muslims or non-Muslims who can criticize uh, government policies, who can uh, demand for better treatment, uh, be it in their workplace, be it in the in society, be it in terms of uh, benefits, yeah. Uh, then uh, there is no differentiation, whether it comes from the demands come from a Muslim or the demands come from a non-Muslim. Uh, say, for example, the terms in terms of uh, um, uh, religious uh, observa observation or uh, observance or of uh, freedom of. Uh, uh, to, to practice uh, their own religions and all that. So this is something which is being uh, uh, being uh, guaranteed by the the, Isla the, the the by the state constitution. And even if in Kelantan you come to a situation where uh, the Islamic law is implemented, there is no there is no uh, problem because the Islamic law does not prevent the building of churches or the building of temples or so on and so forth. Right. So. Uh, I do not see that there would be a major problem yeah, in terms of what is being uh, enjoyed by non-Muslims today. Uh, they can uh, carry on uh, enjoying the same uh, and uh, it would be a, 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 a religious obligation for the state to ensure that these uh, rights are being, uh, are being uh, how do you say, are being uh, Enjoy by the non-Muslims themselves. Yeah. You want to follow up? Yes, no, yes. I do, um, mm. and I hope I'm not belaboring the point, but you know it answers. But but mm. my question was more like the. Well, I asked a question about past individuals in power who are having problems with the idea, imagining working with non-Muslims on non the oh. So that was that was what okay. I was interested mm. in. Okay. 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 Mm. Um, with regards to Islamic law, thank you, Muslims only. My, my question is that Malaysia isn't divided, Malaysian society isn't divided into non-Muslims and Muslims that we live together mm. and, and we're not, you know, like, only Muslims go to Muslim schools because we have Muslims who go to national schools and we have people of different backgrounds in, in the same space. So in that case, I, I see, you know, how does that work then? And we have a law that goes black and white, but we're actually talking about the very gray area. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think uh, with, re with respect to the, most, the the past leaders who are uncomfortable working with non-Muslims and all that, then it's just something that you have to we have to work out, you know. Either they they they, they give up their positions of uh, of leadership, uh, and they have to accept the fact that this is uh, this is the uh, only way forward that that uh, they have to uh, overcome whatever uh, limitations and weaknesses that they have and their inability to. Uh, to uh, debate and discuss and negotiate with uh, uh, with other people, yeah, we, uh, they, they have to have to uh, develop that. Either they overcome that uh, deficiency, or they uh, they have to uh, you know uh, give way to others who can, right? Uh, as far as uh, what you're saying about uh, being in the same space and all that, I think uh, I put, uh, I don't quite see the problem, you know, because even now, as I was mentioning, there are uh, laws, say, for example, Islamic uh, family law, which is being implemented, even though you are living with uh, non-Muslims and all that, but there are things which Muslims uh, do which are which differ, you know, in terms of uh, marriage, in terms of, uh, uh, you know,
know personal practices and all that. So even though you're in the same you're in the same space, uh, the fact that uh, Islamic law is being implemented on Muslims with respect to certain uh, individual acts such as uh, drinking, adultery, yeah, and and all that sort of thing, I, I don't think it's it's really a problem as far as the the fact that you're in the same space uh, is uh, you know is a is a reality. Okay lah, maybe the problem comes in when you say, okay, the Muslim commits adultery with a non-Muslim, right? Then what happens? So a Muslim drinks with a non-Muslim, what happens? So as far as what we can say is that and then the Muslim is the one that's going to be uh, punished according to the Islamic law. And then the non-Muslim, that's something which the courts will have to decide in the event that it's something which is uh, deemed as uh, being uh, something which is wrong or otherwise. Right? So if uh, it is found that it is uh, not contrary to her religion or his religion, then uh, it may be uh, no action will be taken. Uh, some say that's unfair. Why should a Muslim be punished for adultery while a non-Muslim is not punished? Uh, to me, that's that's not an issue. Yeah, because uh, from from our point of view, what we want to make sure is that as far as the Muslims are concerned, they understand what their religion states. Islamic uh, perspective. Yeah, what we are more interested in is that what is Islam is understood by all. Uh, we're not particularly uh, into trying to clarify what other religions teach and what other religions preach. So what we want to make sure is that Muslims understand that uh, uh, gambling is wrong, drinking is wrong, adultery is wrong, and that there cannot be an uh, Islamic uh, school of thought which says that uh, maybe it's okay. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So. Can, can I pursue that line? Yeah. I'm going to tell you more. I think just following on your question, if, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, your answer is still quite black and white, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, say, for example, your last uh, statement about uh, we want to make sure Muslims understand mm -hmm. uh, what Islam really is. Even within past, the interpretation about uh, how to move forward in, in Malaysia differs. One party mm -hmm. says it is more Islamic to go with Amno, the other one says it is more Islamic to go with Pakatan uh, Rakyat. Uh, or, you know, maybe either both sides are saying uh, doing either way is Islamic. So, how can you come up with this idea that there is one interpretation of Islam and this is it, the way the state will define it? Uh, I think uh, I'm not trying to over oversimplify, okay? but what I'm just saying is that in terms of the Islamic law, in terms of uh, the implementation of the Sharia, in terms of the Hudud, in terms of adultery, in terms of alcohol, in terms of... Uh, 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 yeah, family laws. Family laws, and family laws, you know, that's that's quite clear cut. You know? So as far as policies are concerned, as far as policies, let's say for example, okay, now you're talking about uh, the economic uh, liberalisation. Uh, what does Islam say, right? So this is something which is uh, very subjective and can be discussed. You know, where the, the Islamic scholars can uh, look at it from the uh, angle of Islamic law, where guidelines are there, wide guidelines, broad guidelines are there and can discuss with the economists and uh, see whether liberalization uh, will be positive or negative and what are the uh, consequences and all that and a decision can be made and this decision is an opinion which can be questioned and can be criticized and uh, it can be implemented uh, this month and uh, six months down the road people say that look the results are not so good we have to we have to change and uh, so it's it's still uh, not completely black and white uh, on issues which are not black and white yeah, but on issues which are black and white, such as uh, what, what I was saying about the specifics like uh, Islamic law in terms of uh, drinking, Islamic law in terms of uh, stealing and uh, adultery and all that, then these are black and white. But in terms of uh, social policies, in terms of uh, wanting to, uh, whether education should be free or whether it should be, uh, there should be scholarships for, for, for all or whether it should be scholarships for uh, certain target groups or uh, these are things which uh, which can be discussed and what is uh, the guiding factor will be the principle of Islamic law where justice is to be uh, to be achieved and there you can uh, discuss and you can debate and you can negotiate and you can uh, and everybody can come into the discussion whether Muslim or non-Muslim because you're talking at that point in, at that point in time you're talking about social policies and education policies and health policies for the for the country as a whole Right? Uh, but as far as the Islamic uh, objective of ensuring that 
every individual within the state is being looked after to the, to the maximum yeah, and that uh, those who are in need are given priority over those who are uh, the haves are 